1989, and they would periodically release games for the Sega Genesis as well as Super Nintendo and other consoles in the future. They first started a collaboration with Sega back in 1993 with their game Pugsy, which Sega seemed to like. They did other games for the console, including Mickey Mania and another important game, that being the tie-in to the uh, groundbreaking 1995 film Toy Story, released the same year. Toy Story of the game was released on Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, and used pre-rendered 3D graphics in a 2D style, similar to Donkey Kong Country. And even though it looks kind of dated now, the times are very impressive. In fact, Sega is like, we want a game like this. Saying as they didn't have a Sonic game slated for 1996 on the Sega Genesis, they thought, let's have a pseudo 3D game, and since Sonic Team is working on their own thing, we'll get Trailer Tales, who we've seen make pretty good games in the past. Sega showcasing that once again, they didn't really understand their demographics. Instead of promoting their upcoming Saturn, which they eventually put Sonic 3D Blast on, they were still like, well, Genesis is still there, so let's make a, a main game on the Genesis. And they're like, oh, maybe we'll put this game on Saturn just because that game console came out. Well, it turns out that same year, Sonic Extreme was canceled, so Sonic 3D Blast ended up being the main Sonic game of that year. Sonic 3D Blast was given a short development cycle of only 8 months, which to make a game like this was not a lot. In fact, the game was a little iffy when it comes to Sonic fans. Some things is just okay, some things say that it's bad. I'm more in the middle when it comes to what I think about this game. I don't think it's the best game, but I don't think it's the worst game. Overall, it felt like another misfire during a time when Sonic needed a good transition, especially since this was supposed to be the main 3D Sonic game at the time. One, it really wasn't 3D, it's isometric. And two, games like Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot were on the shelves around the same time. In fact, it came a little earlier than that, so overall, it made Sonic look like he was way behind the times. So while the pseudo 3D looked cool, because the isometric view just looked a little chunky, it wasn't really that impressive in the long run. It might have been more impressive a year ago, but at this point, the last time a country game came out, which didn't do as well as the other last two, and actual true 3D games were starting to take shape in the uh, market. But not all things were bad with Sonic, a 3D blast. In fact, it ended up being satisfactory to Sega, because at the time, it made money, and it did what its job was supposed to do. Especially on the Sega Genesis, which was a console they were still kind of supporting, but they were going to get rid of it after this year. Uh, it makes sense to have a console still market, but the fact that Saturn needed every help it got, could get, and it basically got nothing during this time, in fact, the main Sonic game you can get on the Sega, Sega Genesis as well as the Saturn. Like, why would you get the Saturn if it doesn't really add anything to the game and the Sega Genesis version is basically the same thing? Uh, except the music is slightly different. There's changes, differences between the Genesis and the Saturn version, which we'll get into. One of the cool things is that the music is amazing in the, uh, the uh, Genesis version. It was the first time that June Snowy did the soundtrack all by himself. Well, kind of, because the Saturn version has slightly different music. And the music is great. Unfortunately, he wasn't satisfied that he didn't feel like a lot of people played the uh, 3D Blast, so he ended up actually recycling one of the soundtracks at the first level in Sonic Adventure, which is a pretty neat thing. Well, a, another person named Richard Jacuz, I believe I'm saying that right, who did the uh, composition for the Saturn slash PC version. He even has a new song at the end called You're My Hero, which is really cheesy and bad. I'm not going to play it because it's a weird copyright with music. I didn't think Sonic music was copyrighted, but then Green Hills got copyrighted the first Sonic video I did, so, you know, I want to be played safe. Richard Jacuzzi is not a small composer either. He would go on to compose a bunch of other Sonic games, including stuff like uh, Sonic of Black Knight, Sonic Generations, and uh, he's been composing music as recently as Team Sonic Racing in 2019. This is my favorite part of the video where we're talking about the box art. The reason I'm doing this is because the Sonic 3D Blast is a bunch of interesting box arts. Not one, because the title has been different throughout its different development titles in different regions. It was originally was being called Sonic Spin Drift, which is not a good name. And then it was just going to be called Sonic Blast, but then it went up to being Sonic 3 Blast. Not only is there two different artwork for them for both releases, but also different names in different regions. So for the main Genesis box art, we have this really awkward looking 3D model of Sonic with a really crappy blur motion effect. It looks like someone used a smudge tool or an effect to do that. And a caterpillar looking bad nick in the background. It looks super early rendered stuff, but it looks cheesy, but it's not bad. But the Sonic model looks like shit, let's be honest. Here's the earliest mock-up of the Genesis box art with Sonic Blast. The model actually looks better than the one in the official artwork, but overall it's still a little cheesy looking. Not the best, it looks really beta-ish. Here's a more finalized version with a really bad smudge effect, though the model is slightly different. I think it looks a little better actually, the model-wise. The rest of it, not so much. Sonic's hand looks really... don't look at his hands too much, they're a little messed up. For some reason in Europe, the game is called Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island. There are Flicky's, and I guess we're on Flicky Island, but... I don't know, 3D Blast rolls off the tongue bear than 3D Flicky's Island. Uh, biggest problem with this one is that the face, the Sonic 3D model here is just a face and it looks awful. This is probably the worst model I've ever seen of Sonic in my whole life. And it's official too. 
is insane. They actually use this on the magazines, too. Look at this ugly face. Like, this is awful. Whoever designed this should be fired, because that's terrible. Even for the time period, that's awful looking. Here's the Brazilian box art. It's the same as the, uh, the American one, except it just says Mega Drive and Tech Toy, because, you know, Tech Toy is the people made uh, the uh, Brazilian uh, Sega products, in case you're wondering. Another cool bonus, South Korea. This is for the Samsung Super Aladdin Boy, which is basically the Sega Genesis, except made by Samsung. Yeah, but I didn't know they did that because of some historical stuff. Uh, in case you don't know, Japanese products are kind of banned in South Korea for a very lo long time. And essentially, they would go over there to do the Samsung. Sega used to make deals with companies in different countries to make products. Nintendo kind of the same thing with IQ. So in, in, the, in South Korea, they had Samsung. In Brazil, they had Tech Toy, but they still had Sega on it, because, you know. Also, like the fact there's a home that says home inside. Also, you notice the box art, even though it's for the Sega Genesis, it uses a similar model to the Sega Saturn one, with a weird green background. Here's the Sega Saturn box art for Sonic 3D Blast. Not too bad, it actually looks more competently made than the other one. Well, it's not great, it definitely looks better than, or than the, the, I don't know, other than the Caterpillar, which add a little bit to it. I think my Sonic looks better here, even though the model still is a crap. And overall, I think this is a better picture. So Jap Japan's version, which is also called Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, looks pretty cool. If you hadn't noticed, in the, during the Genesis part, I didn't mention J Japan at all because, well, Sonic 3 Blast was not released on the Genesis in Japan. The Genesis didn't do that well in Japan, and Sega Saturn did, so it made no sense to release it on the Genesis. Also, this artwork is kind of weird. While it looks stylized, Sonic's blinking is really cursed looking. The Sega Saturn in Europe looks about the same, just of an ugly model again. Yeah. And here's the PC box, in case you're wondering. Nothing too exciting here. So what's the story of Sonic 3D Blast? Well, if you open up the game, you get this really greeny cutscene we play the Genesis version. Apparently this was very impressive at the time, because basically the full-length 3D cutscene, but, you know, pixelated. It looks like crap, though. If you played the uh, Sega Genesis, well, it's Genesis, the Saturn version, you get this cutscene, which is still kind of crappy looking, but at least it's not super grainy. It is grainy. I mean, look at this thing. It's kind of sucky, too. It just showcases, like, look, here's the bad nicks, and here's the flickies. One of them's really fat for some reason, and Sonic's spin ball is kind of weird shaped. And they also look inside of a ring, like, wow, look at this amazing ring. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and that's about it. When starting the Saturn version after that, you uh, get this little map, which is nice, and then you just get plunged into the game. However, pressing start in the American version gets you a story. Flickies are mysterious birds. They live in another dimension and can travel anywhere through large rings. Robotnik learns about the Flickies. I will change the Flickies into robots and have them search for the Chaos Emeralds for me using that infinite power of the emeralds that can conquer the world. Sonic visits Flicky Island to see his friends, but the only thing he finds are robots. Robotnik meet my friends like this. I must see them. Robotnik must be stopped. Sonic starts to defeat the enemies in order to rescue the Flickies who are trapped inside. Go, Sonic! You can warp through the big rings with the help of the Flicky. She has a robot can save the day. And that's how Sonic 3D Blast starts. Or Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, I'm sorry. In case you're wondering, this is what the Genesis version looks like normally. And here's what the Saturn version looks like. It's not too different, actually. Even though they feel they control differently, but I'm not sure if that's uh, the fact my the Saturn emulator kind of sucks. I couldn't figure out how to get a good one, and the one that worked wasn't that great either. Which is unfortunate. I'm not going to be able to play a whole lot of Saturn games. In fact, Sonic R, based on, even though I've been able to play on Saturn, I'm probably going to play on the GameCube emulator just because it's a lot easier. Now, do I own these games? Kind of. I have a Sonic video, my shorts, and showcase I own them, so I don't really care that I pirated them. It's not my fault that Saturn games are so expensive and they're hard to record off computers and stuff like that, and I don't have enough money to do that stuff. Anyway, before we talk about the main levels and gameplay, let's talk about the special stages, since I like to get them more with first, because they're a little different than the rest of the game, and I might as well get over them. Let's get over it. Let's get over it. Each puzzle stage is different, but they have the same way of going into them. So I must find 50 rings in the level. In the Sega Saturn version, if you get 50 rings to Knuckles here, or Tails, it doesn't really matter, they will transport you into the special stage, which is taking a while to load. Uh, 3D model Sonic and Knuckles, or Tails, if you found Tails, will transport you into the half pipe, which looks super cool. Like, wow, this is actually what? A cool looking Sonic game. Imagine if a Sonic game actually looked like this on Sega Saturn. That'd be so cool. Unfortunately for me, I think this it, it controlled like ass, but I don't think that's actually how it's supposed to be. For the reason the, the uh, even the rest of the game controlled fine, this part just controlled so weird. Like I said, the emulator I used for it was such a finicky mess. Uh, I actually ended up swapping over to playing the regular Genesis version, so there's not much that much difference in changes between the Saturn and the Genesis. 
overall this stage I feel could be pretty cool. The special stage I say, but I felt it was really hard to control because, like I said, Sonic kept going all over the place, which is really weird. He did not feel right at all. But overall, it is super cool to look at, and I kind of wish that there's more. There's actually a full-on Sonic 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 game. And find a Tails or Knuckles located in one of the levels. They just or sit there and do nothing. They transport you, if you have 50 rings, into the special stage. The Jess version sucks. It's easy, but it's lame. You basically are in this one part where it's kind of janky. You gotta jump over spikes and collect enough rings. It's like the half pipe from Sonic 2, but, you know, on a weird bridge over, I don't know what I'm looking over. Is that like the Earth is Sonic in space or something? I have no idea. It looks ugly. It's disgusting. Let's get off of it. And that's it for the Saturn version. I will be showcasing footage of playing it during levels since I played the first, well, most of the game on the Saturn and then swapped over to the Genesis. The most of the main things you'll see is that there's some weather in some stages, which look nice, but overall it's not too important, and the music's actually slightly worse, to be honest. What's the main point of Sonic 3D Blast, or Sonic 3D Slickies Island, if you will? Well, we're in an isometric view, and Sonic's running all over the place. Well, kind of running. He's a little clunky. He feels incredibly slippery, and on, even using a joystick didn't really help anything matters much on 3D plane. It felt still, like, Sonic felt really slippery and kind of awkward to control for the most part. It, well, it's not bad. A longer exposure to playing, oddly enough, makes the game feel a little worse than it actually is. Your main goal is to collect the Flickies on the island. That's why it's called 3D Flickies Island in Europe and Japan. Essentially, all the Flickies are in the last stage or inside the Badniks. There's different Badniks in each level, and you got to find a bring in the center to get the Flickies in there. Sonic can jump at stuff, but it's kind of hard because the jumping kind of sucks including the asymmetric view, which doesn't make things easier to do. You can also roll or spin dash. If he's still, which doesn't happen very often, he can spin dash. But it doesn't really work that way, because Sonic is so slippery, like he's never going to be still. It's hard to keep still. So most of the time when you hit the button, you'll just roll. So you'll be doing a lot of rolling moves, since it's the easiest way to hit enemies, because the jumping is very janky. Once you collect all the flickies in the area, you give it a ring, and the ring will transport you to the next section of the level, until you finally get to the end, which ends the act. There's two acts, but most of them are just the same thing. We'll go over each of the zones when we get to the zone part. The first stage in Sonic 3 Blast is Green Grove Zone, which is basically your typical Green Hill Spire level. It's pretty basic, it's pretty easy, but it do has it do it do have I can't speak as you can clearly see, but it does have some interesting enemies. Like these turrets, which aren't actually bad nicks, so I'm not going to be talking about them, but they appear in every level and they're annoying. They shoot in directions. They're kind of hard to predict sometimes, and random spike balls. The enemies for this level are, are three including Hunter here, who has a little ball It spins around it. Hunter is not really a hunter, as it just kind of sits still. It also looks like a purple piece of crap for some reason. Don't know why they designed it to look like that. Scouter is kind of, it looks like a buzz bomber, but it's not. It kind of just flies around a little bit, but not really. It sucks. It doesn't scout out anything. And this guy is such a great bad nick. He's on the cover of the game. It looks like a catacure, but he jumps out at you into another hole. And his name is Snake. Yeah, Snake. Really creative. Green Grove is not that interesting of a level. There is item boxes and other things that you see in Sonic. The only one noteworthy is a new item box that makes Sonic yellow. And in order to get these items on you know, these springs that give you those what ups, you gotta have a bunch of flickies. It's kinda not self explanatory. I always forget that. I was like, oh, how do I get that? I was like, oh, yeah, I gotta get more flickies. But then I forgot about it because at that point, who cares about that? Uh, the game isn't too hard, so you can collect all your rings, like much like another every other Sonic game. So there's a new item box that can let Sonic able to home into enemies when he has it, but it's kind of rare and you'll probably lose it very quickly. It's pretty easy to get hit in this game, at least I find it is. Even though I think the Jess version is a little better when it comes to controls, it's still awkward because of the way the 3D works with a controller using a D-pad. It's not the best, but overall it feels less slippery, but at the same time it's more awkward. So yeah, Sonic 3D Blast is kind of a weird game. There's also a Fire Shield, believe it or not, from Sonic 3. Yeah, they actually returned in this game. It's only used in one level, but that is pretty cool. At the Act 3 of every level, there's a, there's a boss fight. It's not the whole level in a boss fight, just the last act is a boss fight. The first boss fight is Green Grove Zone Boss, so these guys don't have any creative names. But it's just Eggman, or Robotic, if you will, just doing attacks. He looks really chunky. He shoots a spike ball down, and you gotta avoid it, because it chases after you. And then after a while, he'll go down to catch it, and that's when you gotta hit him. Pretty easy, pretty basic. I do like the fact they add crack marks in his little helmet thing there when he gets hit. That's a nice touch. The next zone in Sonic 3D Blast is Rusty Ruin. It's basically a ruin that's rusty. Creative joke, I know. 
Essentially, this just does what the last zone did, except it adds these new spinny things that are the only way you can break through certain things. It's kind of weird. It's not like spinning in circles, but not spinning in a ball is what breaks certain pillars. I don't really understand it either. There's new bad nicks and new obstacles like fireballs that will hit you, and you gotta get your fluckies to the ring. Like this weird crocodile, and there's tails there, but you gotta fly your way back there. Fly home, boy. The two enemies that appear in this level are B, who kind of looks like Charming B, but you know, it's B. A creative names, by the way, and this crocodile badneck, which has the most creative name of all time, Croc. These badniks are actually pretty easy and pretty inconsequential. It's kind of surprising that they're in the second act here. I feel like they'd be along in the first one since they're so basic. Like, wow, Croc does such much damage to Sonic. Those are these annoying flookies that appear all over the place. They appear in blue, pink, green, and red. Uh, Blue just kind of does the typical flicky stuff, you know, flicky, flicky, flicky. It's actually kind of similar to the flicky arcade game where you gotta collect birds, but instead of actually collecting a bird, you're collecting flicky himself or herself. I don't really know if it's a species of birds, it doesn't really matter. Each one acts basically the same, except for when it gets dropped, it still has different patterns. Like green wanders like a little bastard, pink kind of moves a little bit, but not really. Blue stays where it is, and red jumps around like a little bastard. I hate these guys. Also, fire and obstacles, if you, they get hit by them, can make them run away like little bastards. But it's unaware if you have them or not, because there's nothing on the screen that tells you that they're out of your hole if you get them out with a robot. Rusty Rune is not the most interesting uh, area, to be honest. So let's get to his boss, which is known as the, get this, Rusty Rune boss. It is pretty interesting, kind of similar to the Sonic 3 boss in Sanopolis Zone. Where Eggman has this thing, you gotta jump on his paw and then hit Eggman. It's actually kind of annoying and a little difficult because of how weird the isometric view is. I'm not joking when I say that I think Sonic Labyrinth did the isometric view style better in that in that game than Sonic 3D Blast does. Because I didn't have so much problems I do in this game as I did as that game. I actually recommend Sonic Labyrinth, which is weird. I usually don't say that about a Game Gear game. But I like Sonic Labyrinth, okay? Don't judge me. The next zone is Spring Stadium Zone, which has Robotnik's face put all over the place as well. Even though the level looks pretty cool, it looks like a digital little circus here, if you don't mind me saying so. It just has a lot of weird stuff going on. A lot of weird bouncing paths and trying to figure out where the heck do I go. That's one of the problems of this game. It's like, where is where I'm supposed to go next? And it doesn't really control that well, so it's not... You kind of want to put it down, but you're doing a video on Sonic Retrospective, so you have to keep playing. It's not bad, but it's kind of like, eh, you like, I don't really have much desire to play. This is kind of repetitive, and, you know, that's kind of Sonic 3D Blast in general. This area also has these weird spike things, which if you jump, as soon as you hit them, they don't affect you, but if you stay still, they'll hit you. They have a lot of those weird things in this game, including things that shoot spikes in certain areas, and stuff in the background makes you feel like you're in the foreground or the background, but you don't really know because the game is kind of weird looking. And overall, this is the part where you're like, oh god, Sonic 3 Blast is kind of annoying. We continue with more creative named bad nicks named Drag Dragfly. It's not Dragonfly, it's Dragfly. It's it's just a Dragonfly. It can fly. I can fly, can you fly? Well, screw you, Dragfly, you suck. We got a Pufferfish bad nick, which you have to jump at, which is kind of weird because it's not really clear where it is in the air. It also puffs itself up, when that happens, you get damage when you hit it. This creative Pufferfish enemy is named, not Pufferfish, but just Fish. What do you mean fish? It's, not, it's obviously a puffer fish. Why would you call it fish? He's called Puff Daddy or something. Shell, yeah, that's the name of this bad nick, is a guy in a shell. And it looks like you can't hit it from certain angles, but I actually didn't think I ever had that problem. I think I've hit it at every angle that I wanted it to. I don't think you can jump on it, but I rarely use the jump button, but who well, Yeah, who cares? This bad nick is named Spider. Yeah, yeah, Spider. Uh, it's big. It looks like a tarantula. Uh, Traveler's Tales, well, why did you name all your enemies such lame names? Eventually, you go to the, the uh, boss of Spring Stadium, known as Spring Stadium Zone Boss, because, you know, none of the bosses have creative names. Traveler's Tales wasn't very good at naming stuff. After all, they have a level in Lego Star Wars called Negotiations, and that's the first level. Anyway, uh, yeah, this guy just yeah, shoots, like, just wiggles his hands around, and then he'll come down, and then you hit him there. It's kind of a weird boss fight. It's kind of confusing. What is he even trying to do at Sonic, and where? I just don't get it. It sucks. It's pretty easy, though. The next zone is Diamond Dust Zone, which doesn't have ice physics, thank goodness, because the game already feels like I'm slipping on ice. There's a lot of things that can freeze you, and Exploding Snowmans is an overall aesthetically pleasing-looking level, actually. There's weird water areas that are like kind of like snow but I guess are water that you can kind of walk through but not really uh that's kind of confusing the physics in this game are just very very confusing 
as well as a bunch of weird evil snowman. Like most of the Badniks are just snowman. Speaking of the Badniks, we got Bunny. Yeah, just just Bunny, who is a bunny that is on a pogo stick, and it jumps up and down, obviously. Pengo! That's a fun name to say, Pengo. Well, this is an actual name. I know it's a penguin, but, you know, Pengo. It's something. Thank you for giving us one enemy that actually has a name that isn't just penguin or, or, or spider. And, of course, there's the evil snowman named Snowman. There's one part of the level where you actually uh, are at an ice block and Sonic is knocked around. There's a couple of cool little set pieces like this in Sonic 3D Blast. They're very short-lived, though. This is one of the longer ones. It actually feels like you're playing a Sonic game, not just that you try to find all the flickies that are trying to ditch you constantly because they got touched by one pixel by an obstacle in the way. Our Diamond Dust boss fight, now right known as the Diamond Dust Zone boss, creative name, it just has Eggman shooting a little snow beams at Sonic and dropping snowman. It's very evil. So you just gotta jump, hit him, and yeah, it's actually pretty easy since, you know, the more you hit him, the less of his things come out, which is a really great design there, Eggman. You become easier as more I hit you. Not, really, you're really bad at this game, aren't you, Eggman? Your plan also sucks. Why would you want flickies of all things? Jeez Louise, man. Volcanic Valley is the next zone, but luckily I have a fire shield, so I don't have to be worried about being burned. Unfortunately, it's easy to get hit in this game, but this is fire shield is pretty nice. I'm glad they returned one of the elemental shields in Sonic 3. Uh, 3. I love that game. Overall, this zone is just full of badniks, lava, of course, lava obstacles, weird bone brick blocks, which you can hit, and sometimes there'll be lava under, underneath, uh, fireballs, all sorts of obstacles coming your way. It's like, okay, we're getting close to the end, kind of, but, you know, not really, because there's like two other levels left. There's also fire jump rope for all the people who like jumping over fire. Enemies include Bat, who is a bat that flies. Bug, who is a bug. Firefly, who is a firefly. And even though they said firefly, like, oh, they shoot fire? No, they just fly. And my favorite, Scorpy. He just looks so happy to be here. Due to the obstacles, you will have the most amount of time spent here. Well, spent being having difficulties here well until you get to the next levels that is but so far this is the hardest level i think the other one of all the bouncy spring was worse i forgot the name of the zone and i'm making this video now i don't know how i did that but i did but overall volcanic valley is kind of hard but not too bad we also got these nice little platforms that Sonic can jump onto and he can spin them up for some reason i'm not doing it in the footage i'm just sitting there for some reason that's what it looks like thank you you can spin dash on them and make them go up. I hate the boss fight here in Volcanic Valley Zone. It's both unintuitive and easy at the same time. It's hard and easy. Probably the worst way to do it. So if you figure out the pattern, it's pretty easy. But in order to get there, it takes a while to do it. You gotta land on one of these pipes. It's kind of hard because lava's in the way. And then you gotta constantly just hit him while there's fire chasing after you. But it's so hard to hit the guy uh, any other way. So basically, it's the best way to do it. Just keep getting lucky. Just try to get lucky. And eventually, you'll defeat him. Hate this boss fight. After that, we get to an industrial zone known as Gene and Gadget Zone. Why is it a Gene? I don't know. Gene must have worked at Gene Gadget Zone. Of course, there's a bunch of obstacles here, and it's really hard to get your flickies back during this section here. Screw that stupid ball. We got new panels that shoot electricity at Sonic. A bunch of birds that don't want to get captured. Like, get over you, you stupid green bird. Jeez Louise, you're, I'm trying to save your life. Go back in your ring, you dumb bird. We got annoying platforming sections that make me want to pull my hair out. I love it. Just love this zone. It's my favorite zone in the game. We have a returning badnik for fish. We also got new badniks like Mouse, who is a mouse. Also Octopus, who is an octopus, if you couldn't tell. Overall, Gene Gadget Zone, which is an awful name, is just annoying. It's not really difficult, just like, painfully annoying. Like I, I hate everything about this zone. It's just not fun to play at all. It does have a pretty interesting boss fight. We're on a conveyor belt. Eggman shooting out weird spike things at the bottom. He'll eventually come down and shoot bullets at you. But you gotta hit him. And try to not lose your rings in the process. That's actually a pretty cool, interesting boss fight. Sort of like the Sonic CD one. But, you know, actually better than the Sonic CD one. I wish more of the level game's design was like this. Actually, we quite like this quite a bit. We then go to Panic Puppet Zone. Why is it called Panic Puppet Zone? It's just Gene Gadget all over again. With even more of the annoying platforms. This section right here can go kill itself. It makes me want to kill myself is basically what I'm going to say. More so than I already do. Like, what is this area? I, th 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 it's so janky. Everything I try to get up in this platform just does barely works. And then you get up here like, oh, can I get it? Oh, finally! That took me forever and then I couldn't even figure out where the last flicky was in this area. 
it pissed me off so much. I actually skipped part of this level, basically, because that's how much I hated this level. Panic Papa Zone is just the same as the other one, with two new badniks, and there's some, the flickies are inside capsules instead of being badniks for whatever reason. The two badniks are Walker, who walks, he's kind of like a spider, but hey, it's better than just saying machine or robot. And World, a little weird, I'm not really sure, it reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. It's like a weird propeller badnik. Eventually, you'll make it to the boss, which is kind of an unintuitive boss. Here, it has weird things on the side, hands, and bullets shooting at you constantly. So what am I supposed to do here? This makes no sense. I can't egg Eggman, so what am I supposed to do? You gotta have this hand about to close down on you, and then hit this blue button that appears when it does that, and that hits Eggman. I don't know why that's how you're supposed to fight the boss, but that's just how what you're supposed to do. It's pretty unintuitive, it's not really interesting gameplay design, and it doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Anyway, you defeat the boss fight, Sonic flies out of Eggman's face, and that's the end, right? Yeah, we saved all the four flickies here. We This is a good ending, right? Right? As long as I have this final weapon, I can conquer the world anytime. See you again, Sonic. Well, that sucks, I forgot to collect all the Chaos Emeralds. If you collected all the cast emeralds, you get a new final boss known as the Final Fight. And it's a fight against the final weapon. That's what it's called. Eggman will do a bunch of attacks like shoot laser guns and you gotta hit him when he makes his body go onto the weird maj majestical platforms. I'm not sure what they are. I guess we're in that weird zone they talked about in the uh, story mode. The second part of his fight, he'll shoot fire at you and then eventually you, he'll come at you again. Basically, it's the same thing. He will come at you by just going slowly into it, and then you go, oh wait, he did that, and then, you, oh wait, he's gone, so I gotta wait for this phase again. It's kind of a not fun boss fight, because it goes on for way too long, and it's not really difficult either, just boring. Next part, Eggman tries to get handsy with you, but it's pretty easy, and then once again, he'll put his body in the screen, and you gotta hit it again. The next phase, he'll shoot missiles at you, so that's gotta dodge it until the he puts his body into the uh, platform, and then you gotta hit him again, but it's a very small window, so you gotta wait constantly, very annoying. You go into the corner. Yeah, this corner here. It will never hit you. I'm not even joking. Pretty lame. And then that's when you can hit him. The worst phase is this bullet phase, which you can easily die over and over during, unless you know the certain trick in order to do it. There's one simple trick and how to defeat this annoying part. First part about the boss fight, it's like, okay, there's a bunch of phases. I got, I'm done, right? No, I gotta do them for a second time. They don't change at all. They're just the same, but, you know, you gotta do it again. Ah, this sucks. Anyway, second time around, you finally defeat Eggman in his final weapon. I don't know what the Chaos Emeralds needed for this boss fight since I'm not turning super, but hey, Sonic got through the final fight. That's nice. This time, Sonic's zooming out the same frame, but this time out the final boss fight. He jumps out the giant ring. I guess we were in that ring world the whole time. Isn't that lovely? And, you know, that's about it. That's it. Thank you, Sonic. You saved us from Robotnik. We are grateful for your efforts. I just did what I wanted to do. Nobody messes with my friends. See ya! Flickies have been freed. Peace and freedom come back to Flicky Island again. And that's the end of Sonic 3D Blast for Sonic 3D Flicky's Island. That would have been the end for Sonic 3D Blast. It came out in Sega Genesis, made its money, didn't do too hot compared to other games at this time for it. But it did what Sega wanted it to do. It was successful enough to keep Sonic's name alive and well even if it wasn't the best thing in the world. Hey, it was 3D on the Sega Genesis. Don't need to go to the next generation console. I didn't need to buy the Saturn. Once again, making the Saturn not appealing to Westerners. Why would you need a Saturn to buy a new Sonic game when that same Sonic game is on the Sega Genesis? Eventually, Traveler's Tales would work on a little bit more projects with Sega, but they would do bigger projects. And eventually, one of the co-founders of Traveler's Tales, who also was the main designer on Sonic 3D, Sonic 3D Blast side, he was going to come back to his game after making games like Lego Star Wars. Yeah, the guy who made Sonic 3D Blast was the director of Lego Star Wars. And the awesome game, Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. He retired from game making after working on the last game being Mar Lego Marvel's The Avengers and made his own channel, apparently. Yeah, the guy who made Sonic 3D Blast has his own channel where he talks about stuff like Sonic 3D's intro sequence to possible fit on a cartridge, right? I said that wrong, but who cares? One of the games he worked on was Sonic 3D Blast Director's Cut, which adds a little bit new features and stuff to make the uh, quality of life, to, to make 3D Blast a bit better of game to play. The uh, new version of 3D Blast adds a lot of things that I needed, definitely. 
it adds a world map in between levels. You can go back easily with the save feature. It adds uh, better movement abilities, like speed is increased, but it also works a little better. It's coded better. It adds in supersonic. So now if you get 50 rings, you can turn to supersonic, which is pretty neat, but doesn't really... Not that necessary, because, you know, who will really want to play Sonic 3D Blast, even if these features are pretty neat and cool. There's a lot of tweaks, a lot of cool stuff. It even adds in the best thing in the world, a Crab Badnik named Crab. The blast has hit the mainland. The blue storm is moving unpredictably, spinning, smashing, gaining power as he tears along. If you should see an eerie gyration of light, move away. You may be witnessing the blast attack. Play Sonic 3D Blast on Sega Channel, the only cable channel with unlimited play of over 70 games a month. Call your cable company to get hooked in. You can actually play Sonic 3D Blast multiple different ways. Like I said, you can do the director's cut, but you need the actual Steam release of Sonic 3D Blast in order to use that one. So you gotta see what game can I play it on. Well, if you want to play on the Sega Genesis, it's a loose eleven dollars, complete forty-two. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. I don't know why I'm doing this voice. Uh, for a later release Genesis game, that's not bad at all, quite literally. Loose eleven is pretty pretty cheap actually. The bleed is actually a pretty big difference, like, since the cases of these Genesis games are pretty easy to find. Even 3D Blast of the Saturn isn't too bad. I think mostly because it was released on the Genesis as well, meaning that there's no reason to get this version since it's not that unique, to be honest. But it is cool that we have two versions that we can get. Overall, this is the cheapest Saturn game we can get. It's the least interesting Saturn game of the Sonic games we can get, but at the same time, you can get it. 3D Blast was also released on PC. I mentioned that. It was released one year later. Here's the jewel case of it. It's not too great, it's nothing too special, but it is pretty cheap. For some reason, the PC has a very different special stage between the other two versions. I have no idea why it's like this, but here it is with the PC special stage. It looks really janky, but it exists. I bet no one even knew that there's a different special stage for the PC version. Isn't that crazy? It actually looks kind of fun, but you know, it's the basic half life stage we see over and over again. Sonic Mega Collection also includes Sonic 3D Blast. Uh, it's actually considered like the fourth main Sonic game in a weird way, even though it really isn't. But when it comes to collections, it's usually included alongside 1, 2, and 3 for the most part. I mentioned Mega Collection is a really good collection, and we'll be covering it when we get to it. The game is also featured in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection as a Genesis title. That collection was also a Genesis version of the game. In case you're wondering, yes, they love to release the game as a Genesis only game. Uh, the Saturn version is never re-released. The game is also featured on the Wii Virtual Console. The service is now defunct. RIP Virtual Console. You can get Sonic 3D Blast on Steam for 5 bucks right now, which is pretty cheap. As it's actually the easiest way to get the director's cut version of the game. Uh, 5 bucks, not bad. I have no idea why they're using the, lo the font and logo from the uh, European version. It looks disgusting as hell, but whatever. The game is also featured on Sega Genesis Classics, which is a compilation I don't mention very often, but it's on Switch, PS4, and Xbox One for a pretty cheap price, but I don't know much about this collection, to be honest. Final ranking for Sonic 3D Blast is once again the C tier. I got so crowded that I actually bumped up Flicky, because in comparison to 3D Blast, Flicky looks a lot better, let's just be honest. I think the gameplay styles work better in Flicky. 3D Blast is a game that's not one I recommend going back to. Unless you're a Sonic fan and are curious. It's interesting, it's worth a try, but worth a whole playthrough? Uh, not so much. It took me two hours to beat the game, despite the fact the game feels like it only has like an hour's worth of content in it. And that mostly comes down to the, its jankiness. I do recommend playing the uh, Director's Cut version because it adds a lot of quality of life upgrades. Though the Saturn version has a unique special stage as well as the PC version. So it's really up to you what version you want to play of the game. That's where it gets a little confusing, because none of them really stand out. 3D Blast Saturn has some interesting little gameplay elements that make it look a little, feel a little more atmospheric, but the Genesis version has better, uh, well, graphics, and actually has a story in it. It's just a very confusing mess of stuff. And it starts, as you can see, Sonic in this era is not doing too well. 95 was a clusterfuck of shit, and now 96 is, well, we have no main Sonic game, or main one. It's just confusing as hell. Sega liked it, and they kept Traveler's Tales for another game. We'll get to that game soon enough, but next time we're covering Sonic 3D Blast, but without the 3D. See you then.